I, I don't know, the experience of being in virtual reality and kind of how that changes our interactions with age. I think it's interesting because age in general is something that's physically is very different uh, and you can't really tell necessarily in VR. Uh, but yeah, so we're talking about that and just some announcements beforehand or uh, these views just represent, uh, you know, us and not the views of VR chat. Um, and there's a bunch of other announcements, but I've been away for 45 days traveling, so I'm I'm kind of oh. a little rusty. I don't have my show notes in front of me, but, uh, you know. Uh, I got you. I got yeah, you. Yeah, join um, us. The yeah, yeah. things are, again, like you said, uh, these are uh, our opinions and our opinions only. These are not expressed by VRChat in any way, shape, or form. Uh, tonight's show is being recorded and stream live to YouTube if there is an actual YouTube event for that. So there is no streaming tonight, but it will be recorded. Oh, there's um, no streaming? Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, with the camera system, you may introduce yourself uh, because name tags are not shown. So if you want to introduce yourself as your name, please do go ahead. Uh, remember, this is an open discussion. So please try to keep on topic and keep uh, questions to a short conversation and not long and drawn out. Uh, cool. Other than that, this is in what Friends Plus. Yep, Friends Plus. So Friends, friends Plus. can come. And yep. also, and lastly, uh, EndgameVR.com. Uh, if you want to join our Discord, we have a Deep Thoughts Discord where we kind of talk about this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, and we're gonna clean up the Discord because. The, there's too many channels with one channel for each event, so we're going to try to like slim it down <laughs> and have a simpler kind of thing. Um, my failed idea did not work. So, <laughs> um, but, If you uh, want to have a private conversation, please head upstairs or downstairs past the bar so that I do not hear you. Yeah. Um, if your friends join, let them know as well that this is a event that is going on. Other than that, I think and we're ready shout to Shout out to Hex Spinner. I see you back there. Who's hey. Hex Spinner? He's, he's not a dev or anything, is he? How's it going? I don't know who it is. He's I don't know. It doesn't He's rhyme with event, anything that so... I know. Yeah, I know. Yes. <laughs> also, one announcement. <laughs> one last announcement is I just got accepted to go to Oculus Connect. So if anyone else is going uh, towards the end of the month. Uh, Tell me how the Santa Cruz goes. Yes. Hey, yes. I know. I'm so excited about the Santa Cruz. So anyway, that's just Also, a, ask him about um, the Monterey. Don't tell him I said that. Yes. And when, actually, <laughs> another last announcement is... Uh, Wow, new loading screens in VR chat. That was a little mind blowing to not have that for the first time in four years. I was yes. broken. I know, me too. I was like, hey, I loaded into. <laughs> so that's that's uh yeah. But anyway, all right. So uh, if Brana, do you want to introduce? Yes. Oh, one more thing. Oh, I thought you skipped uh, over that. Don't forget to go to your system menu and turn off voice oh, yes. prioritization, so you'll be able to hear everybody. And with that. Um, uh, yeah. me. I thought you skipped me, but we're good. All right. Uh, we ready? doing it? Yep. Starting I'm in ready. three, two, one. You're left. Welcome, guys and girls, to you, the end game show hosted in virtual reality by none other than Psych and Catapult. Tonight, we're going to be talking about uh, technology stuff as it relates to. Age groups, I think. That's nice. all they told me to say. Nice. Yay. Welcome, everyone. Hey. Um, yeah, thanks, Catapult, for coming on the show. Um, My yeah, so I guess, yeah, we're here to talk about kind of technology and aging and stuff. So do you want to give maybe a little bit of uh, background on what interests you about your to about this topic or like kind of what your personal experience has been? Um, yeah, also, do you want to come maybe come forward a little bit? Uh, Towards it, yeah. There we go. Cool. Yeah. So, what's what's your uh, experience been so far? What what interests you about this topic? Well, originally, um, like you know, I heard about the DK one, the Oculus DK two, and all that. My curiosity was peaked, but I didn't give in quite yet. And then eventually, um, I ended up buying a cheap uh, Chinese headset, a Pimax 4K. That was my introduction to VR, and it had a shortcoming, but at the same time, it got me in there. And once I saw what it was like, um, I decided to, um, sorry, that's my phone. I'll just ignore it. Um, but um, I, once I was in there for about three weeks, I had this Pimax for about three weeks. Um, I um, 
decided to get a HTC Vive. And then once I got the Vive with the controllers and the tracking and all that, I was just blown away. Um, I started off with social VR in um, Altspace and then found this uh, VR chat. And once I got in the VR chat, I mean, with the graphics being just incredible, the avatars that you could create your, yourself and all that, I was just totally blown away, and I've been pretty much hooked ever since. And that was uh, about a year and a half ago or so. Okay, and, and how old are you? I'm 59. I'll be turning 60 in February. Okay, cool. All right, so on the precipice of the 60, and how, how are you feeling about uh, turning 60 soon? Ah, it, in a way, it's good because I'll get the government pension. I'm taking it early. And uh, so I'm, all, uh, I'm already retired from work. So uh, I've been retired now for about four years. And um, then I'll get a, a little bit extra from the government uh, once I turn 60. Hmm. And I guess I, I'm kind of curious to get like of, our, of all of us here. And again, you don't have to... Uh, to do this if you're not comfortable but i'm curious like what our age rate age range is um so maybe we can use like the thumbs up emoji uh if uh so get ready with your thumbs up but like so if you are i guess let me think what the age so i guess like um if you're under 21 maybe you if anyone younger than 21 okay and then uh wow. like 21 to 30 21 to 30, 21 to 30 age, One, two, three, four. okay, all right, uh, 31 to 40 age, okay, okay, 41 to 50, nice, nice, okay, and then 51 to 60, we got catapult, hey, cool, cool, okay, so we have a pretty, uh, diverse age group, and interestingly, actually, when I, uh, I launched this experiment once on VR and people did it and we had a normal distribution of uh, 500 people who downloaded it, who had a Vive. There was about a normal distribution of eight shows, mostly both in the, I think, 20 to 40 range kind of thing. Um, so I would have thought that it's a lot of young people, but um, it's really distributed pretty evenly. Um, but yeah, it is. So, and so I guess like when we're talking about this generation gap and things like that, I mean, have you noticed any differences? So, you know, in real life, you're 59 years old. Well, also in VR, you are too. But like, have you noticed any differences when you come into VR chat and interact with people uh, versus when you're in real life going in a situation when in a novel, you know, social situation? Are there any differences uh, in, in VR in terms of how people interact with you? Well, I'm more like an old hermit. I keep pretty much to myself. I stay at home. I don't go out much. Uh, I do have uh, two kids. Uh, one's in his 30s and the other one's in mid-20s. Um, but um, even then, even trying to talk to them, sometimes the communication is a little odd because they start talking about stuff. I have the slightest idea what you're talking about kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that. And that's what happens a lot in VR where I'll get mm. into a room and a lot of people are in there and they're talking about, you know, stuff, obviously. And I'll, you know, come up and say hi and whatnot. Then I have, I start listening and I haven't the slightest idea what the hell they're talking about. It could be a new game. It could be a new phone. It could be, you know, something that they do and it's got its own language, lingo, whatever you want to call it, terminology. And I haven't the slightest idea. So most of the time I just go sit off to the side a bit and listen in on conversations. And if I hear key things, sometimes I'll crack a joke about it or whatever, or just join in if it's something mm. I know anything about. So you're kind of lost sometimes with the references, like that people are... Oh, definitely, you know. definitely. Hmm, interesting. And And what about like in terms of, do you think people view you differently since they can't see how old you are? uh in the virtual environment versus the real environment also by the way i'm curious if anyone has uh thoughts or different perspectives please feel free to come forward and use the uh emoji uh the exclamation point or something like that if you have a thought uh and if i miss it and you see it like you know just let us know but uh but yeah um yeah do you notice a difference at all uh kind of sometimes it's almost like you know, in, in real life, um, you know, younger people, 
you know, will might be a little intimidated by an older person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if intimidation is the right word, but you know, they'll, mm-hmm. they'll, 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 they'll um, I don't know, maybe be a little more polite than they would be with their friends and stuff like that. Uh, more serious kind of thing. Maybe it's a, a respect thing or whatever. Uh, respect your elders kind of thing. Hmm. And so, uh, and what happened in, but in VR, it's different? I know. Actually, it's very much like that in VR. It depends on the person. Some people don't, don't really care. And some hmm. others are, are quite respectful. Okay. And Verona, were you, did you have a... Uh, yeah, I was gonna say that everything that you said I relate to, so I feel like that's probably just a frame of mind rather than an age thing. Like I, I mm. often like find myself in a similar situation where I just have no idea what people are talking about. I don't know the latest game or phone or pop culture right. reference. So that's just because I'm already a hermit and I'm 24. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But that's all I thought. Yeah. So, so it sounds like having the. Uh having that lack of context or not knowing what people are talking about isn't just an age thing, but it's really just a social thing where, you know, it might be you know, more in, so... in, yeah, it might naturally happen as you get older where you just kind of stop paying attention because you've done it long enough. But I feel like there's a few people I know, including myself who are the same who give up way early on because they just kind of don't care. <laughs> like I don't really care about much of the pop culture, latest technology, unless mm. it relates specifically to what I'm doing in like VR. Even still, I don't know the latest VR game. I haven't checked the Steam library in like a year. <laughs> so I don't know. I like yeah, VR yeah. chat's the latest game that I played aside from uh, that other one that people dragged me into the hyper, whatever, the new social one. I don't even remember the name of it. <sighs> but yeah, hmm. that's all I was thinking. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. So, yeah, this, you kind of share that experience by being young. But it's interesting because, Catapult, it sounds like you had the assumption that it was your age that was leading you to be in these situations where you didn't really understand what people were talking about. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of hmm. it ha- has to do with that, I, I, I guess. Um, like I say, I don't know if it's some younger people are intimidated or they figure I have absolutely nothing in common with them. So they go off in their corner. I go off in mine kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Interesting. And, and, uh, did you, uh, do you have, do you think that you appear differently in terms of representing your age in the virtual world versus the real world? Uh, I would have to say that most of the people that hang out hang out in VR chat quite a bit know me and know that I'm that I'm you know 59 and in the late 50s. This is about the same kind of thing. Yeah, well, a lot of people just say just my voice alone sounds like you know I'm an old fart. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone else have experiences uh, where they're perceived to be a different age in virtual reality than they are in real life? at all I, i'd probably have to say i'm definitely like that but that's true in real life too because i look really young for my age mm. so m- most people think i'm you know in 30s maybe uh even in real life so <laughs> interesting interesting and and so in, yeah. in vr it's, it also feels that way yeah it comes across that way too i think so your experience of being a certain age hasn't changed from the real world to the virtual or do people yeah it's funny enough it seems like it's the same same thing yeah maybe it's it's a mental uh thing that you project you know because you get treated a certain way yeah and so i i guess i'm also curious i mean this is really for anyone but like and like for me at least my typical age group of people that i hang out with in real life is maybe ranges from like 24 to 32 ish something like that i'm 27 um you know i don't know it's kind of about that but i feel like vr like the friends i've made in vr chat like hanging out with someone who's 59 for me is not i don't just like go hang out with people who are uh 59 or 40s really i I just don't know that many people like i i don't come across there's not a context where i come across people like that so is that a similar do people have a similar experience in vr is that or like do you hang out with younger people in vr than in real life you said mostly that maybe you're more of a hermit so you're not out hanging out too much with i don't know i'm just curious if that's like you know i'm i'm pretty easy going so i'll hang out pretty much with anybody that'll you know let me hang out with 
I kind of yeah. think that's why I do I do improv a lot and um, with the um, rehearsals on Saturdays and and I, I like doing that improv on Sundays and whatnot. I get to hang out with a bunch of young people. Uh, my sense of humor being older is totally different from theirs. And so it kind of meshes pretty good together. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Do other people feel that? That, that your ages yeah, I mean, are... I, I think in VR chat, in a certain way, that you know, age is a much of a less thing compared to real life. Because... I mean, the thing is, I mean, what, what, what do you, when you meet someone new in VR chat, what you don't, what, what do you first thing, you don't ask, say, oh, how old are you? You know, you're yeah. usually talking about, you know, a similar topic or you overheard something, you join a conversation, and that's how you become friends with someone. So I think that, that makes a huge difference compared to in real life, where, you know, as soon as you see someone, you, you look at their face, you look how, I mean, it, it you know, you almost prejudge. Whereas mm. in, in VR, you, you can't do that. You know, you, you judge people on, you know, on how they interact with you. So I think definitely, you know, age in, in a social setting, maybe in VR chat, is a less of a thing. That, that's how I've experienced it, at least. I, I would actually Good point. Um, agree with, I, I think he was saying that, uh, I don't remember who it was. I think it was Kenapo was saying something about the fact that he's meeting people uh, that he wouldn't normally meet uh, in, in other situations, like maybe uh, younger people, older people. And I think that is one interesting thing about VR chat is that, you know, I wouldn't necessarily be interacting with somebody much older, much younger, but uh, there's, you know, as much as they shouldn't be on is, you know, like 11, 12 year old kids on this game, all the way up to people. I met somebody in their eighties. Who was, t who was just playing this game because, you know, their uh, their son had it. And so I wouldn't be interacting or making friends with somebody who's like a 12-year-old but uh, or, you know, a 60-year-old because I'm just not in those kind of social situations. I'm not around mm -hmm. those people in the workplace, in my friend groups. But here, I can meet them and I can actually get, kind of get a different perspective of like what a, a, what a minor thinks about, about this game and what, you know, kind of mm -hmm. that whole deal. Yeah, and I guess what is that perspective? I guess that's a key question here too. Is like, do you, I mean, do people feel that like that that being able to interact with people of a much wider age range spectrum changes their pers your perspectives on life or the world or anything like that? Oh, I made a I made a friend uh, on here not too uh, long ago. I think he was uh, he was either twelve or, or thirteen, and he actually brought up an interesting point where um, he can become friends or he has an, a, a much easier time becoming friends with people out of his age bracket here than he would in real life he, if you would hmm. uh essentially what he was saying is if you if you talk to like somebody who's like 20 25 no no they're not really gonna try to associate with them in 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 outside of the game you're either gonna keep to themselves they don't really want to interact with with a 12 year old whereas here you're they're much more likely to not really care about the age and just start chatting with with this kid uh than than otherwise mm. and it's kind of an, an interesting dynamic where you can make more friends and more age groups because it doesn't matter as much um that's and that's also reminding me that i feel like social like social support is such an important thing in psychology for like helping people with depression anxiety substance abuse things like that and it's interesting because what you're saying zaid i think kind of highlights the fact that if you can make friends if age and for you know what you're saying too like if age becomes less of a factor in socializing then that means that the amount of people who are available for social support increases and it's mm -hmm. like if you're, you know, it's much easier almost to like meet people because age, if you think about age, there's only so many people out there who are your age. But if you increase the, the greater the range of age that you're able to socialize with and the more people, potential friends that you can make and things like that. So it seems to like increase the amount of social oh, support yeah. that we have. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge thing that I found is that so many, I mean, even I, I venture to say a, a vast uh population of the people who play this game are people who have issues like social anxiety and things like that and have trouble and it's kind of like um it's almost like crowd therapy they're they're, they're coming in here yes. and trying to it's it's easier to interact you're getting you're getting a more direct interaction than if you were just talking over a microphone or over a screen but somewhat less direct than if you're 
really face to face with that person. And so it allows them to kind of be a little bit more comfortable and open up and, and possibly help them for actual scenarios in real life because they're, they're able to, it's almost like a, a, ver a middle point that you can't get out of VR and they have a very hard time in real life, but here that it can almost bridge the gap and it can, it can hmm. almost help them uh, to, to become a little bit less awkward or anxious uh, in those situations and it could translate. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And Dojo, I saw you nodding earlier. Did you have any uh, thoughts about your experience of this at all? Uh, not so much. I just agree that you definitely meet people from a, a much wider age, age range than you probably would uh, in real life. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like more diverse experience, things like that. Yeah. It, it could just be my. Um... Uh, what would be the proper way of saying it? The way I see it, I'm thinking more like, okay, there's a bunch of young people here that are talking about something. Maybe I don't want to interrupt them, so I'll just go over there kind of thing. So I'll walk in, say hi, everybody, because most of them I know, and then I'll just go over there. Mm -hmm. So you're more conscious of your age probably than they are. Because um, they, they it, might not it, know it, it's a, someone who's older than them. Maybe it's more my ignorance of what they're talking about yeah yeah which happens to all of us i feel like that we don't know necessarily what what people are talking well, about well, well see the thing is like you take a lot of people in vr chat their age groups their idea of an old video game is a ps1 my idea of an old video game is an atari 2600 <laughs> yeah yeah you know so i i mean i've never done the ps1 uh, and so on. Once I, I, I did the Atari 2600, and I'd say within about two years, the home computer started getting popular, like VIC-20, the Atari 400s and 800s and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I ended up buying a VIC-20, and I got into computers and been in computers since. So do you think that your age has changed when you're talking to people about different things? And so this is an interesting example where you're saying that, like, People are talking about, oh, the old video games were on PS1 and your old video games were much earlier because you're because that age difference. I think also this is something as a younger person, I think it's hard for me to actually imagine what it's like to be someone who is significantly older than me, just because thinking about what it's like to have the context and history of, of, of decades more than what I have is kind of like, I think it's hard for us to actually imagine. Uh, and just as when we think about, if anyone thinks about being 10 years younger, especially the younger you are, it's hard to think about having the perspective that you have now. It's like, it's kind of changed a lot. So do you think that in any conversations that you have with people in VR chat and things like that, are there ever times where you feel like your perspective on the situation is just, you're just like have a completely different kind of like perspective uh oh yes on definitely people. and like what are some of those things that well like let's say like when i was raised there was a certain um set of beliefs uh one of them is you don't have to be happy at work you just find a job do your job go mm. home you know that kind of thing and um i i worked at the same place for 32 and a half years the first eight years I worked there, I thought it was the greatest job in the world. You know, it, everything was good, and then management started to change, you know, and things started to change always for the worse, of course. And then, you know, after that, by the time I left there, I hated my job with a passion, but I put up with it. You know, I was looking after my pension. I said, I want to get the heck out of here and never have to work again. Hmm. But so you, at yeah, the same you time, you know, you know, all, all the different beliefs, you know, are so different now. The music is so different now. Everything is so different now. So do you feel like in VR you're exposed more to those differences than you are in real life? Not necessarily being like in VR chat. Um, I'm not really exposed to those differences. It's more like the conversations and stuff like that. Like you take... Um, uh, cell phones and the mm -hmm. way people communicate with each other now they'll be sitting in the same room but yet they're texting each other instead of talking you know i yeah there was no such there was no such invention when i was younger so it was like we all gathered yeah. around and we all talked and played board games or whatever it was that kind of thing yeah 
Interesting, interesting. So, yeah, so there's a different kind of way of interacting. But VR seems to return us to this whole medium of interacting with socially as opposed to texting through your phone and, you know, those kinds of things. Be able to yes, just interact. In, in a way, that is definitely a plus because um, in some of the previous Endgame shows, the thing that blew me away is people were uh, talking and saying that in real life they are shy to a fault, but yet they can come in here and start introducing themselves and have conversations with people, which helps them in real life, which is way cool. Yes, yes, exactly. Interesting. Another another thing I've noticed, and I don't know if you guys, I mean, I don't know how many people here have demoed. I'm guessing that all of us with VR headsets have shown other people vr and things like that and one thing i noticed i just spent the past six the reason i wasn't on endgame is i was spending six weeks i got a research grant to travel for six weeks and i had to do 100 interviews around uh, the united states of with people to talk about like what we're using vr for in our research and things like that but um i did so i did 107 demos of vr and i brought with me two laptops and two samsung odysseys so i was like taking all these people into vr chat like that was the thing i was demoing to them was uh, uh vr chat and the differences in age were pretty uh just interesting like i feel like um it, the younger the person was the faster they got the sense of controls like the movement looking around um things like that i had a few negative reactions to vr but that those were people who were older tended to be older so I guess the, I don't know if this is people's other experiences that they've noticed that age affects how people perceive VR and kind of interact with it. I, th I, mean, I think this... it has, I think it has more to do with, with whether you're a techie or not. I've been mm. in the computers uh, for a long time since I, I think 1981 or 82. And um, to me, VR, yes, uh, at first, for what they wanted for it, and it was still experimental, uh, like I say, with the DK1, DK2. So I didn't want to get into it then, but um, eventually I ended up getting the HTC Vive, and then I ended up getting rid of the Vive and getting the Oculus Rift because it suits my eyes better. But I, you know, to me, I'm still mind blown by it, especially yeah. VR chat, because I'll tell you, it depends on how you look at it. If you only look, walk in the VR chat and just look around, yeah, okay, that's nice, and then walk out, you know, you're not doing it justice. The way I look right. at it, I look at all these custom-made avatars and whatnot, and a lot of it, hey, this guy has got to have a pretty wild imagination to come out with something like this. And it's the same thing with the worlds. Like, some of these worlds are just mind-blowing. You know, you yeah. walk in there and you look around and it's like a bad trip on acid or something. <laughs> but yet, <laughs> or you know, somebody's imagination, somebody's <laughs> imagination, you know, yeah. was wild enough to create this thing, not to mention the know-how on how to do it. And it, it, to, to this day, even after a year and a half, there's still things that still blow me away. Yeah, novelty too, I think, is a big part of that. Like, there's new worlds Actually, that we can explore. Actually, for me, VR chat, the novelty of VR chat has kind of like worn off. Now, I don't come here now as much to be wowed as to, you know, should the breeze with people and stuff like that. But mm. there's still the odd time where I'll go into one world that's extremely well done. I'll just be, whoa, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so, uh, what has anyone else experienced? If Verana, I saw you nodding a little bit, like, uh with the age differences of like when people have shown other people vr if it, does anyone have experiences like of noticing differences of uh did run uh yeah um you were mentioning showing people vr and stuff and the uh, the age like the older someone as they tend to kind of uh not get it as fast well, um recently i don't i haven't really showed too many people vr um Aside from like my immediate family, but recently at the, like the beginning of the summer, I uh, met my biological grandmother and aunt for the first time, wow. and they made it. They, they yeah, it, that's a, it's a story. But anyway, they 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 took a trip down to our house because they wanted to see how uh, my mother, who was adopted, lived her life. And uh, I I talked with her on Facebook, and she uh, she she like I have a 
you know, VR stuff posted there. So she was like interested because apparently she already played video games, apparently, which I was surprised about already. You know, she's, I think she's, I think she's somewhere around your age catapult. So it was like, you know, I was like just surprised to hear that I had a biological grandmother who played video games and she was into cars and stuff. But anyway, cool. uh, she, it is, it's pretty cool. But she, uh, she came and I got them to both uh, try VR at some point because she really wanted to try it. And I, uh, she picked it up quicker than I did. Like she was wow. less awestruck than I was and she picked it up way quicker. I put her into two games. I put her... Uh, one of them wasn't a game, it was a simulation. Uh, Universe Sandbox. I put her in a Universe Sandbox, and I put her into Drunken Bar Fight. <laughs> um, like, probably 30 seconds to a minute into the Universe Sandbox, she was uh, throwing planets at uh, each other, and not even, uh, not even like 10 seconds into Drunken Bar Fight, she had figured out how to flip the bird and punch somebody in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> she, wow. Sounds like a cool grandma. She and she was she became like yeah she came she came like a pro boxer in like uh, five minutes. So I mean I didn't really notice an age thing like she I mean she kind of seemed generally slower and you could tell she had aged she had seen a lot her life was rough apparently. Um, there was a huge story on her side of the family but you know I put her into VR and she was like. 20 again so i don't know some people it's probably just different for some people i mean i noticed that it, uh, age does have does play an effect generally but some people just don't matter like they just see it and they're just, it just clicks you know somehow but see, see the thing the, the thing is with the older generation a lot of people think that they just sit at home and the little old ladies just do some knitting and the old guys just sit there with their hands down their pants watching tv a lot of them uh, you know, sometimes it's because of their kids. Their kids will have a computer and they'll go to their kids and say, this is cool. Hey, wow. Wow. So this is nice. I can look up this. Oh, wow. I can follow, let's say if you're into auto racing, you can follow all sorts of different auto racing on YouTube or whatever. But the thing is, all of a sudden, they go home and they decide, hey, help me buy myself a computer and mm. show me how to use it, blah, blah, blah. Once they get into that and see all the neat stuff they can do, like at Verona, Grandma, all of a sudden, she plays games. She's probably played Solitaire on Windows and then decided to try something a little more adventurous. Who knows? Maybe she played some Quake 3 and whatnot. <laughs> and, um, and and next thing you know, hey, let's see where this can go. And then you give her the offer to try on VR. And, whoa, this is so cool. The thing yeah. is, if you have parents or grandparents, ask them to please try it. Because my guess is the odds are once they put the thing on and just not a roller coaster, nothing that's going to churn their stomach because when you're not used to it, it can happen quite easily. Uh, something very simple, uh, just mm. a demo that they just sit there, no controllers, just sit there and enjoy the show kind of thing. And chances are they're going to be blown away. Mm, does, they, does anyone else have experiences showing uh, older people? Uh, Here. Yes, I I would say uh, I don't I don't have any uh, story as, as as wonderful as his, but um, I'd say just from a general uh, experience standpoint, from my experience with showing various people VR, uh, and and the differences in age, is that I guess what I what I would say generally what I found is that the further away of a possibility this was from when they were a kid, the more shocked they are. So if I showed it to somebody mm. who was playing, you know, an Atari for entertainment when they were a kid, you know, and, and ice hockey, whatever, that they'd be blown away. But when I showed my grandfather who, you know, skipped rocks and tipped cows, you know, when he was a kid for, for fun, yeah. it's like this whole different thing. And so that's generally the way I saw it is that the further away, I mean, mm. the, the more future it seemed from, you know, from when they were a kid, how far away of a possibility that was, the further it was, the, 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 be the better the reaction they had to it because they've realized how far the kind of technology has come. And I, I thought that's Yeah, the more profound the experience. You know, it, 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 it's also like uh, some of the older people, some of them will embrace certain technologies while others want to have nothing to do with it. Yes. You know, and their their opinion is formed before they were even put the headset yes, on. Yes, I had. 
I had someone who one one of the people that I showed, and it sucked because this this demo was actually the night after I lost my luggage. So I was really kind of like I was traveling for so long that I was like my temper. I don't know. It sucked. The first person I showed the next morning was this guy who a psychiatrist who tried VR. He came into VR chat. I showed him around things like that, and he was like, he took it off and he was like, "This stands against everything that I stand for as a as a psychiatrist." And he was like angry and all this kind of stuff, and I was like, "What? I I don't know. I'd never seen a reaction like that well, negative uh, to VR before." But then, as a psych as a psychiatrist, but does he only treat people his own age? No, I don't. know. Well, he wasn't treating many people anymore. Actually, he was more well, like a manager. Because yeah. right now, by you know, his mind was already set on not liking it, and he didn't like it. So, in yeah. other words. Well, you know, if he's treating young people and young people like technology and he doesn't, uh, that doesn't sit well with me kind of thing. Well, yeah, and I also think the social VR, like, I don't know how many of you guys, when you talk about the fact that you come into VR chat, I mean, I know when I talk about the fact that I come into VR chat, I have friends in VR chat, like, people definitely are like, wow, you're like one of those kids playing World of Warcraft or you're on Second Lot. And like, they just kind of view it like they don't really understand. Oh, can you guys hear me? Oh wow! Yep. Okay, my my hands lost tracking, and so I thought I froze out. But yeah, other people. Okay, uh, but they said yeah, they don't really uh, understand what it is to be socializing, and I feel like older people, especially, don't understand like social VR at all. Like about you know what it's like to even communicate with screen name or an avatar. Like it, you know, the younger you are, the higher the chances are that you've even played a video game with an avatar on it and things like that. Um, so I guess, do you think of the age difference actually makes a challenge in adoption of vr as well like people are kind of cynical and skeptical of it and just mm -hmm. or just react negatively to it and those kinds of things well like for me personally when i first got it it was like wow i like this this is cool but over the year and a half i got to the point where i'm slowly getting back to some of my older um, games on a uh, regular screen um it's just for me personally, having the headset on for too long bothers me. Um, mm. Gives me headaches, and it's What's just too like long. Having to wait, uh, I would uh, say time? anywhere between an hour and hour and a half. Two. I've been for about two hours, and by the time by the two hours by the time I got to two hours, it's, get this thing off of me. Hmm. That's you it. Know, yeah. Just because the yeah. discomfort. It's interesting because at. Uh, at Stanford's uh, Virtual Human Interaction Lab, Jeremy Balenson, who's like a big VR researcher, says he feels people should, and I think it's kind of ridiculous because I think people like us spend a lot of time in VR, but 20 to 30 minutes, or 20 minutes, I think, is like anyone in his lab doesn't spend more than 20 minutes in VR. Whereas for me, I feel like spending more than 20 minutes is oh like the goodness. minimum you need to really feel immersed and like explore a world and, you know, end up, I would you know, lost somewhere. Uh, I, I would I would agree with the twenty minutes for a beginner when you're first yeah, starting VR. True, true. That way, it get your VR legs. So if you spend too much more than twenty minutes, you might start getting nauseous. If you start getting yeah. sick doing something, you're not going to want to do it anymore. And just uh, Stoko, what were you what were you going to say? No, I'm just saying, yeah, twenty minutes is like the intro to it. It's when when you start really getting into the world, really into the experience of VR, because. It takes you a while to adjust to, let's say, like your new proportions or your new body. It takes a while for things to click in your brain. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's true. Um, also, your mic is pretty low. Uh, I think it might be set to the wrong mic, I think, potentially in the settings. No, it's because uh, it's my desktop microphone. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Go. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, Zaid, what, what were we going to say? Uh, I actually had more of a question, and it was I was wondering what was the reasoning. You said uh, this guy who does all this a lot of this VR research. He said nobody, uh, he doesn't have anybody in it for more than uh, thirty minutes or so. W what's what's his reasoning behind that? Because I've had I know people who've literally spent twenty four hours and slept in it just as a challenge, and were perfectly fine in that. And then I know people who can only spend an hour or whatever. But I, I was just wondering if you actually, if you knew what his reasoning behind that was, only like 30 uh, minutes in VR, what's... I know, well, yeah, he does experience... Do you experience, think it has some kind of... 
well yeah he does experiments and tracks like how vr affects us like he had an experiment where you chop down virtual trees and then they went to the bathroom and they tracked how many paper towels they use and they saw that people use less paper towels if they chop down virtual trees um things like that that it affects us in the real world in very fundamental ways and i guess he's kind of, and this is just my guess as well like i don't i have to go back and like or you know this would be a question for him but uh i think it's like this fun vr has a very powerful effect on the brain and so he just wants people to only go in for 20 minutes. Um, even his, but I think it was even for his students as well. Um, or like the people in the lab don't spend more than something. I think I, I'm pretty sure it was like 20 minute rule or 20 to 30 minute rule. Um, yeah, but I, I'm not so, quite so, sure why. Yeah, more. Seems so like then, I'm, so then I'm assuming that he's doing that as more of a constant then. So it's more of a, a constant. in the Yeah, experience. yeah. Rather than just uh, anything like psychological, it's just he wants it to be a, a flat base yeah. that it stays the same for his experiment. Yeah, it's not a it's not an evidence based decision. It's more of a kind of impulse to just keep it short. I think maybe. Um, yeah, uh, Freeman, what were you gonna say? No, exactly what you said. It's just like twenty. It's such an arbitrary number, you know. It's like where does he get it from? Why does it has to be a certain amount of time? You know. Unless he's yeah. got so many people that want to use it, and you get twenty <laughs> minutes, then the next yeah. time gets twenty minutes, yeah. and so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. He wrote in his book. He was like, "I advise not to do more than twenty minutes," kind of thing, which is. Oh. Yeah, well, I advise not to do less than twenty minutes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> it might also come from uh, just uh, the general guidelines for things like computer vision syndrome. Where every twenty minutes or so you're supposed to uh, to look away for for a while and let, give your eyes a rest. Really, you're supposed to look away every twenty minutes from your computer screen to give your eyes a rest. Yeah, yeah look up the. Uh, I think I think it's called the twenty. Bro. <laughs> I, th I think it's called the twenty 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 rule. And something like wow. uh, every twenty minutes, look, well, look twenty feet away for twenty seconds or something. I'm. I'm, I'm... <laughs> I, I would argue that vision. to a certain <laughs> to a certain <laughs> extent in VR because when you're on when you're staring at a monitor, the monitor's in front of you, so you're staring straight ahead at this monitor. Yeah, or in yeah. VR, you can actually look Refocus. around the lens, so you, you're you're actually exercising your eyes. Your eyes aren't just focused in one spot. You can, I mean, even though I'm looking over there, I'm actually I'm looking there, but I'm actually looking in the corner a bit in the corner of my eyes. You you do have yeah. a little bit of peripheral vision. Yeah, you're looking through lenses, especially, too, so it's kind of yeah. like binoculars. But I think we don't know the effect of exposing, for migraines, for example, we don't know the, expect, the effect of exposing people to VR uh, who are sensitive mm -hmm. to migraines, for example. I have, um, some people... Yeah. I have migraines. I have uh, diagnosed. I have migraines, and that's, that's one of the main things that I was terrified of when I, when I first got VR, was like, how is this going to trigger uh, migraines? Mm -hmm. And I don't think one has ever been triggered from my eyes being strained or anything from I, I'll hmm. feel a headache coming on, but it's only uh God, I don't know. I, I'd have to spend a, like a few hours or more, like two, three hours in before I'd even start getting a yeah. headache. And then once and I'd get a headache, I'd make yeah, I'd make sure to take it off before, you know, because before it would escalate or anything like that. But um that yeah, it's also a possible dose response kind of thing where like you slowly sensitize yourself by using it more and more for long mm -hmm. periods mm -hmm. that you built up to the point where it's not like bothering you as much. Absolutely. Yeah, interesting. So, yeah, interesting. So I guess this is like getting towards, I guess, people's perceptions of VR and age and like what that, what that, what that kind of entails. Um, does anyone else have any other thoughts about age and perceptions of VR or anything or people who've demoed or uh, Rose Puffins? I see you pointing, but I, oh, Phil. Um, have there any been, uh, have you like done anything involving like VR sickness and age? Hmm. No, I haven't. Mm. That, that would be an interesting. Uh. Yeah, that's a, it's interesting because so Eve, as people know, most people know that's my mom uh in, in vr chat uh and she's actually uh i noticed one thing is that she's more immersed on 2d screens um like when she's watching something on a 2d screen or even when she she uses vr chat from desktop but some of the, some of the ways that she reacts to environments when she goes in she's like whoa 
and things like that that like if i was on a desktop you know like playing second life and going to environment i really wouldn't i just i don't think i'd be as immersed i think immersion is the construct here or potentially but like uh when she goes into that she's more immersed so phil to your question i think that potentially if someone's more immersed in the vr and I, also i think zade you were saying that people's reactions uh the older they are are more they're, they're more impressed um but that's like that's exactly maybe the same kind of thing where it's novel and it's more immersive so that could lead to greater motion sickness i think potentially uh because they're more immersed in the situation or in the environment and they're kind of like uh more sensitive to that artificial motion uh in the mm -hmm. vr yeah um, um yeah, that just takes a while to get the hang of that uh like i yeah. um like when when my kids came over and tried it for the first time they wanted to try the roller coaster i said if you're starting to feel queasy or just feel a little weird close your eyes or stare exactly out front where you're going if you look off to the sides yeah you're going to hurl you know <laughs> but <laughs> it, yes. if you look if you look straight ahead and look in the direction you're going, chances are you're going to feel a lot better and you're going to enjoy it a lot more. Yes. It took me a long time before I could mm. actually look off to the side of a roller coaster while I was going. Because at first, because um, I do sim racing in there also, and the motion, when you're driving and you look beside you for the car that's coming up beside you, it's like, then all of a sudden, oh, I don't feel so good. <laughs> you know, when you turn yeah, back, yeah. facing oh forward. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, and wait, uh, Ghoster, did you have an explanation for it? Or was that Zade? Ghoster? So actually going back on a couple topics ago, I wanted to talk about this. Uh, let's see if I can figure out my camera with this. I know, I'm not not nothing special. Um, basically, uh, I took my computer setup with my VR over to a coworker's house who had a kid who was 15, uh, I want to say 13, and himself. And they were all playing the VR for the first time. And for whatever reason, the kid had no motion sickness at all. The, the you know, the father goes in and within a couple minutes of playing uh bam, he's already going, Oh no, no, I can't play this. This it's sickening. Um, so, mm. I mean, and just see the experiences too, like the ones that you don't move around on seem easily a lot better for new people. And I've told them many times, you know, yes, even I on new game tool get sick the first two or three times I play the game. Like I'll get that sick queasy feeling. But after that, I'm fine. I don't need to, uh, you know, compensate for, oh no, I'm moving now. You know, it just comes naturally. So I, I think mm. it's also an adaptability thing of how easily can you adapt? I would assume that, I mean, after this experience that younger kids are more easily able to get over that mm. motion sickness than you know older adults who have been used to this is what it is mm. yeah mm. they can adapt a lot quicker interesting yeah huh yeah uh, zade what were you gonna say uh i think if there's anything else i would add to the conversation not necessarily just about uh, age but just i guess the the vr experience as a whole is that i think it it gets a bad rep and it's also somewhat misused in the way that uh, i think catapult said it was a while ago, but he was talking about if you're introducing uh, VR to somebody in an older age bracket, don't put them into something that's going to make them sick. Don't put them into, you know, uh, what do you say, a roller coaster or something like that. It's going to make them queasy because it's going to turn them off to it. Uh, um, and I think the, the knee-jerk reaction for a lot of people when, they, when they're showing other people or their parents or something like that, uh, is to show them the, mo the absolute most impressive things and the most and whatever. So they'll always throw them into maybe a roller coaster or some kind of scary yeah. horror map or make you tight wire walk. And and it'll immediately for that population that's not that's not really warmed up to it. It'll immediately turn them off and they'll they, they'll instantly not like VR anymore. And they'll think yeah. it's, they'll be you know why why would anybody ever need that? Why would I ever need to be terrified? You know. Yeah. And and in VR chat, I think the um, example for that would be like if you go into a world and there's people playing crazy loud music that's hurting your ears and people with these ugly avatars and you get it all in your face versus when you actually have that first like one-on-one -on -one personal connection in vr and you realize like why it's so important 
I think yeah. a lot of that is lost behind the wave of like, oh, this is shocking, this is crazy, and they don't mm. really see past what else VR can do because people just try to force it on them, force the most intense stuff on people, and then they they walk away with a, a bad taste in their mouth, like, oh, who would want to get scared? And you know, if I don't have to, who would want to do this? That's not fun. Yeah, I think actually in in demoing vr what i've noticed is that the, the biggest thing that transcends age in terms of what experience to show is social vr because when people really understand that vr can be used to interact with one another and like especially when i would show people and bring someone else in like if any of any of you guys came in while i was demoing vr always especially the older a big age thing actually is that they ask they don't think it's a real person. They think it's AI. They always, the older the person, almost always, if someone's over like 35, basically, I've had almost every person with the first VR chat person that comes in the room that's not me, they see, they think that it's just a bot that's just been like summoned or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an interesting, like, and actually I would have thought it would be the opposite almost, but, um, you know, but people understanding social connection, once they realize, oh, this is a real person and they're in Finland or they're, on England or, you know, or they're three states away. It's like, it, you know, it's a very amazing thing that I think draws people in and kind of the social connection is something we can all value and that it does transcend age in some ways, uh, social funny, connection. Funny yeah. you should bring that up because when I first got that Pimax and actually I didn't join social VR until I got the Vive. But um, when I first got into VR, I said, why in the heck? I got Facebook. Why in the heck do I want to do social in VR? There are so many cool things you can do and whatnot. And then one day I just said, uh, once, I, once I, got, I had the Vive, I got to play around with other stuff. And uh, one day, just for the heck of it, I downloaded Allspace and I decided to go give it a try. And all of a sudden I started talking with people and whatnot. Hey, this isn't half bad. Then I started playing that um, disc golf game that they got in there off the mm. campfire um, world. And I met this guy in there. I can't remember what his name was. I found out he was like 77. I can't remember, 74 or 77. And he was using a Gear VR, so the phone thing. And he would go in there every night, every evening. He'd go in there, play about three or four rounds of this disc golf. He really loved that game. <laughs> He'd go in there. He, he, he wasn't in there to to talk with anybody or you know on purpose <laughs> kind of thing yeah he would go in there play his game a few rounds of his game and then he'd he'd log mm. off and then i met him i started shooting the breeze with him i found out we're in the same country he's out east i'm out west and um and uh he's retired i'm retired <laughs> so it was kind of cool because wow. uh, like you know you know big world but yet again small world mm. and uh, but that's 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 how that's what he enjoyed about vr even though it was a gear vr it was a phone he'd go in there play his little game didn't go around talking to people or anything or looking for a conversation mm. he was there to play his game if somebody started talking to him he would be courteous and talk back you know have a conversation and do you think the thing that drew him back was the fact that other even though he was just playing his game do you think the thing that drew him to alt space specifically was the fact that other people were there well the thing that was weird is he would show up go straight to the golf game and then when he was done playing he would just log off so i don't think mm. he was going there to talk to people i think he was going there to play the game he liked that yeah, game like so much he would go there yeah. just for that purpose it was free so it was great and if there happened to be somebody that was started to talk to him, then hey, so be it. So he would be nice. He was really nice, really nice fella. And hmm. uh, I had great conversations with him. Cool. Interesting. It's amazing. I think. Um... Oh, no, no. I just, it's just a comment. Sorry. No. I've talked enough for him. No, no. He was, just, like, he was just saying it was a. Yeah. So go ahead. I mean, I must say this is, um, it reminds me of um, when I visited my friend you know, in the U.S. and Florida because it, I think more and more people are, you know, who are of the older generation are definitely trying to, well, not trying, but it's just once they discover that, you know, um, their friends or their sons or daughters are, like, playing these games, they, they want to get involved as well. Especially, hmm. 
you know, I'm sure you've heard it all, you know, from Battlefield or, you know, all the mainstream stuff. And I think, you know, I think VR is probably the next step, really. Yeah. It, you know, it offers something that they, they can never get from those games. That, and know, as many. Yeah. As, yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead. It's just. You know, if they're, you know, it's just a different experience. Especially if they tried it before, you know, they've got a friend or a daughter, you know, who, or son, who, you know, who they tried it, tried VR. You know, that's it. You just got to try it. You never know until you try it. Yeah, you know, and I think that... be used to the usual mainstream stuff, but unless you try it. Yeah. But, sorry. Uh, so cool. Up. Sorry, what were we saying? Uh, you're right. it's still... Oh, is that better? Yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. Okay. Uh, one of the things I wanted to say was, um, uh, I've tried to introduce my mom into VR chat. Throughout my life growing up, uh, she never really understood me playing many video games because when my mom was younger, she was the adventurous type. When she was younger, she traveled all across the country hitchhiking. She traveled through Europe hitchhiking. She's mm. all about the real life experience. We, I even went to watch the movie and... Uh, I'm ready player one with her. Ooh, yes. She, she was hoping that the game shut down throughout Aww, the movie. The, uh, <laughs> yeah. Because it because to her, she doesn't see video games as uh, being able to create relationships or interpersonal like uh, mm. connectability and stuff she like that. She sees it as escape. Yeah. So yes, that's one that's of the biggest exactly. things is yes. she doesn't understand yeah. really anything with my VR stuff or I've I've attempted to get her to try Aww. and play and she just right off the bat doesn't really like it. <laughs> and that's attachment that you're talking that this attachment that you're talking about. So I think that's interesting that it's like the yeah. Where oh we yeah, say, Stokel. Stokel. Yeah. Try and get her in VR and put her in Google Maps or Google World or Earth or whatever the hell it's called. And that I've done that. I mean, I said, okay, so what's the purpose of this? And then I started going That's back to where I lived. So where <laughs> I lived, I started going back to where I lived when I was a kid. You know, That's amazing, and whatnot. Yeah. I, and to see what it looks like now. <laughs> wow, this is so freaking cool. So if she's traveled so much, she might want to go back to some of these places and see, like, you know, they normally scan it once a year or whatever. And, and so that way, that. there she could see she could see changes. You know, I, I used to live there. Holy cow, that building's not even there anymore, or, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and get her into uh, the Google Maps. And but, that also gives me an idea. I can even drop her down into, like, uh, later on throughout it, maybe, like, the the forest or something like that, like, places where that she would not normally go. Right? Yes. And I think what you guys are talking about, it's interesting, attachment comes up, because Freeman, what you were saying with, like, mothers and sons, or even, like, for example, my mom being being able to come into VR chat, she comes in through desktop mode. But like, I very quickly, like, once I have enough money, I want to buy her a headset and computer because it's like, what does it cost for me to fly home to visit versus uh, like how many visits home work? Like, it's four visits probably. It costs the same as four flights to and from home uh, for me. And so it's like, okay, four fl four round trips. But, like, once they have the technology, the ability to maintain an attachment or interact in that, like, deeply interpersonal way is so much faster. And that's what, or so much deeper, I think. And so I think that's what, like, with the people with attachment and people, you, if you show people what it's like to interact with people they care about in VR, that, I think, could be the uh, a, a thing. Because I think as people age, they value their relationships more. They don't want, for example... Uh, their children moving farther away because they'll see them less and, you know, things like that. But if, you, they, if, if you're able to show that VR can facilitate these closer interpersonal relationships and transcend distance, um, then maybe that's also another way to kind of get uh, I, older people I have mixed. It. I have mixed feelings about that because, mm. okay, yes, it, it'd be great for communication and, you know, maybe meeting every second day and shooting the breeze and all that, but you'll never be able to replace mommy's nice warm hug. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think uh, sacrificing the visits, <laughs> uh, sacrificing the visits uh, for the VR is definitely not the way to go. I just mean that, like, I think after 
spending that much like people don't think that much about visiting their parents four times but but yeah. yet it seems like such a big thing to buy the vr and the headset for that same purpose but yeah as long as you can afford to do both obviously you're not sacrificing the visits uh that's right yeah, yeah. that is yeah because also the thing is that there's a cost for travel as well like you have to have enough time off to go travel and all that kind of stuff so um, right but yeah never i think the replacement part is it's i think vr is the closest we can get to interpersonal interaction but it's not the it's not the same as interpersonal interaction but i think it's a it's a good yeah it's good uh, yeah close yeah so uh yeah. It, 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 and it's not just for you either it's for her like you know i'm yeah, sure that yeah yeah she's quite and then my dad can go in too. and all that yeah. yeah it's like the it's like a, it's the gateway it's the gateway drug or whatever it's like put the vr headset in someone's house and then you know um yeah but cool well we've been going for about an hour here uh does anyone else have or catapult well i want to hear your kind of final thoughts maybe you can give your kind of final thoughts on the subject and i'll see if anyone else has some final thoughts that they wanted to share before we wrap up unfortunately so any other kind of X Men are left, um, but um, ah no, yeah yeah, you just, let, just stepped out. The one the, the one thing you'll all notice is when we get up in age, we're pretty much set in our ways, and you get to the point at certain age where it's it's kind of like, you know, I don't care what you want, you know, you go do you and let me do me kind of thing, you know, I'm not bad mouthing you, I'm not discouraging you but you know don't push me into what you want you know mm -hmm. that kind of if that makes sense yeah yeah and i would imagine that i mean everybody's like that but you get to an age where pardon the expression you're sick and tired of bullshit <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think young people at this in, in today's world are sick and tired of bullshit too at this point but yeah no, no. Yeah, i hear you <laughs> i know what you're saying uh interesting but it, it, it's just... yeah, no, I, I get what you mean i get what you, exactly what you mean i um I, I work with a lot of volunteers who are um of an older generation you might say you know 60 plus and one thing I've learned from them, the most important lesson I've learned is, is the fact that, you know, it's, it's always, you know, there's always a certain way to do things, but the most important thing is just to make sure things get properly done, you know? I, I don't know, it's yeah. part of, like, it, it, it's just such a ridiculous say, saying, isn't it? It's, but the thing is, never half arse anything, basically, that's what she, she was trying to tell me. Just everything you do, do it the best way you can. And that's what hmm. she's always told me. I mean, I've known for four years. Yeah, maybe not not a long time, but hey, I'm still working with her today. And every day I learn from her. So that's it. So, it's a funny thing to the best your ability. That's it. I love that. Love it. It's a funny thing. You mentioned a volunteer organization. There's a wise fellow once told me, in a volunteer organization, shit rolls uphill. And it is so true. <laughs> because nobody's getting paid, so the guy that's at the top yeah. that's making the decision, he's the one that eats all the shit. <laughs> wow. Yeah. In a cor corporate world, <laughs> it's the other way around. It flows down. Yeah. Man. <laughs> You know, I'll I've the... got some more if you want. But I don't know. I'll hold those. <laughs> um. Yeah, Zade, were you gonna? We need that kind uh, of closing nugget at this. Yeah, yeah. I I'd say uh, to, to wrap it all up on the whole on the whole VR talk. I say that really in the end, VR is exactly what you make it. Um, and I think. Personally, there's probably something for almost everyone in VR. I just think most people haven't found it. And mm. um, for some people, it could just be blasting some zombies in some zombie game, and then you leave, and that's all. And that's all you'll ever want out of VR, and it's all you'll ever get. Uh, for me, I got it almost solely so I could have personal connections with people who I formerly can only talk with over a microphone. And uh, you can kind of see that in my avatars. If you find any of my avatars, specifically for VR chat, um, since the main thing I, I try to do is I make uh, personal connections, uh, they all have a wide variety of um, 
facial expressions. Like this one has about eight different facial expressions on it. And if the, the camera's right here, um, I use this especially to help uh, immerse myself in a conversation with a lot more shy people. So I'll, I have a wink, I have a smile, I have, uh, you know, surprise, I have an angry face, I have essentially, you know, everything that, that can take that from one step to the next, from from this immersion to the next immersion. And, and before you know it, you don't even realize um, you're not having this conversation face to face because people are smiling and laughing and stuff at you and you can see their face and even down to facial expression. So mm. it really is just what you make it. And Freeman yeah. saying that he thinks VR VR's the future. I I totally believe that. Um, Stoichel saying that his mom, you know, thinks it's useless. Like I said, I think a lot of people just don't realize or they've never had that experience that makes them realize that there actually is some kind of value in it. Yeah. Unless they try it, they don't know. That's what I'd leave it on. You know, right, it, until it's, they try it, it yeah. It, it's the same old thing. It, it's, yeah. Unless they try it, they don't know because everybody will look at it with a different set of eyes uh it's the same thing like people will say well go look at this video on youtube well yeah youtube will show you you know some guy playing a game in vr but until you actually put the headset on and experience the 3d yeah. effect of vr you're not seeing nothing the the video is not doing it justice yeah exactly yeah. interesting well th this is great uh yes well thank you catapult for coming on uh Oh, my you pleasure. know, these were some last uh, interesting last thoughts and things like that. And just also before we end, I just want to make an announcement that um, I think we have the guests. Hopefully, I'm I'm trying to wrap up the scheduling for this, but in two weeks, I'm hoping that we're going to get this professor uh, from Yale who does. Uh, she's built a, a virtual reality. She's been funded by Oculus to build a virtual reality application to try to help people quit smoking um, using or avoid using vapes or something like children uh, under 18 and things like that. So she's going to talk about uh, those kinds of things in game design and, and mental health and things like that. So um, I'm hoping that she'll be able to uh, come on in two weeks as well. That's our future. And join Endgame VR, our Discord, endgamevr.com. You can join our uh, Deep Thoughts Discord where we'll, we keep these conversations going. But uh, but yeah, cool. Well, thank you guys. And thanks, Ghoster, as always, to um, slash Ghoster, who is embodying Endgame VR uh, for filming and everything like that. And thanks, thanks everyone uh, for coming and everything. And, thanks, we're and also, this is every two weeks, so we'll be meeting again in two weeks. Uh, but yeah, cool. Well, I, let's uh, take a picture. Maybe, Ghoster, do you want to go on the stage and take a picture of us down here? Or oh, is that probably the best thing to do? VR mosh pit. Yay. It's all down the middle. <laughs> that actually interests me, the, uh, the, the VR smoking thing. Great, Ghost. Yes. What, is that yes, a, me what too. day is that? Uh, two weeks from today. It's always on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. Good yeah. Luck. yeah. yeah. That looks cool. I mean, yeah. I've met I've, I've met you once or twice before, but only in social stand. Like, cool, 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 cool. uh, yeah. yeah. I never did this. I've been in here though. Yeah. I actually think I joined him a few times during his interviews uh, on this round of custody thing. Oh yes. I, I, yeah. I joined you. I joined you a few times when you were you were drawing oh. graphs and stuff like that. You were drawing graphs oh. and showing oh. some people. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Yeah, age doesn't matter. I like that. <laughs> age doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter. Doesn't doesn't matter. matter. Except for when it does. Make it. 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 I think that's a good note yeah, to leave. Yeah, uh, yeah, I remember when we met the one time when you brought your friends and you brought like three of your friends in the VR the one night. We were, uh, the FBI, it wasn't karaoke, it was after that movie night. We were watching some oh, crazy movies. Cool. Oh, wait, this is not my OC. Oh, yeah.
I, I'm not worried about the FBI. I'm Canadian. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Save that. Because that yeah. us saying yeah. age doesn't matter could be taken in a whole other way. Like... And then has a YouTube <laughs> channel. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> you remember? Yeah, I'm sure that is all. Discord and subscribe. Yeah, join. Yeah, we got to be quiet about that. When else the government come tax it? I'm glad you came, man. Nice. Fucking recording. So what are you guys saw you on, so I, I assume yeah, something interesting and, was going on. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. too easy at that point. Yeah, thanks, man. We're good. Yeah, 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 but it's good. It'll be good. Yeah. Uh,